Yo, what up? I'm doing two today, so that's why I have the same clothes on. Another five out of five read, and one of my favorite reads of this year, Ray Bradbury and the Zen in the Art of Writing. Anybody that has the desire to write or is interested in writing themselves, um, is just interested in writers in general and like the artist process, what it means, you know, to be an artist in general, should definitely read this book. I couldn't stop underlining things and the way he speaks about, you know, his passion for writing, it's, it's one of those things that like, I feel it myself as a writer, that it's a necessity. It's something that we have to do to survive. If I didn't write, I would go crazy, and I know that's the same way uh, with Mr. Bradbury. This is a collection of different, like, essays that he used to publish, like, at the end of his, at the end of some of his books. Um, one of them I had read because I read uh, Fahrenheit 451. Sorry, I'm in a park and there's some kids riding around. Let me close this window. I would read, you know, an essay at a time like an essay a day or so but it's definitely going to be one of those books that i come back to whenever i need some inspiration or some motivation to write if i'm in a slump or something like that or just in a reading slump i found this super inspirational to read and write it just after i got done it just made me want to sit down and write every single time so i definitely suggest this and it's very good his uh prose is so not dense but like saturated it's easy to read but it has so much to it and but to read some of the passages uh about you know writing and what he says is uh it isn't easy nobody has ever done it consistently those who try hardest scare it off into the woods those who turn their backs and saunter along whistling softly between their teeth hear it treading quietly behind them lured by a careful acquired disdain we are of course talking of the muse and this little essay goes into what he what the muse means to him and its history throughout you know mythology and writing and everything and he's like one of the few writers that i feel like is like a genre writer you know he writes mainly for entertainment but or his writing turns into prose and that prose turns into poetry and he just got shuffled in with the literature crowd instead of the genre crowd He's kind of like Tolkien. Lord of the Rings is fantasy, but it's like literature fantasy. And it, there's beauty and it's concentrated on more than just like telling the story. Like it's just a beautiful piece of writing and the same with him as well. It's, you know, he kind of jumps all over the place, which it also helped me understand more of like what he writes and a lot of you know it goes back to his childhood he focuses a lot on like the fall and october which is uh, coincidental because um it's fall right now and there's a bunch of the orange leaves on the ground all the trees and billings montana are falling and it's quite beautiful to drive around and look at so he goes from like sci-fi with fahrenheit 451 to like childhood carnival things because he's always like carnivals with something wicked this way comes and then he has some more childhood stories uh, with dandelion wine. He writes a lot of sh short stories as well, and all of those have to do with, you know, fantasy and sci-fi, and he even wrote The Martian Chronicles, which is, you know, short stories about aliens and, and the society uh, on Mars. And so he kind of jumps all over the place, but and he seems like a genre writer, but he really is a literature writer and one of the best, you know, out there. And kind of took, a while for me to get him I guess it took a little bit to click mainly because of his uh, saturated prose and I didn't want to take the time that it needed to like really grasp it I just kind of wanted to rush through it whenever I had to read Fahrenheit 451 in high school and, and so when I reread it last year or the beginning of this year I I took my time with it and then I also read something wicked this way comes this year as well so this is my third Bradbury just in the past year and it's definitely made me appreciate him a lot more i bought a collection of short stories from him that i'm excited to get into i'm not much of a short story person but it's going to be interesting to start getting into that i know i need to read a few more just to give you a sense each tension seeks its own proper end release and relaxation without this any art ends incomplete 
The failure to relax a particular tension can lead to madness. This is not so unusual. Literary history is filled with writers who, rightly or wrongly, felt they could tidy up, improve upon, or revolutionize a given field. So many of us plunge forward where angels leave no dust print. An athlete may run 10,000 miles in order to prepare for 100 yards. Quantity gives experience. From experience alone can quality come. Anybody that wants to be a writer, he gives a lot of good advice. Uh, a lot of things that only people as artists kind of understand. So it helps being able to relate and realize I'm not crazy. And, and yeah, it just has a bunch of good advice in it. A bunch of references uh, of authors and works and his life and how his advice kind of changes. Because these are essays from throughout his entire life. Definitely worth checking out. Really glad I picked it up and read it. And yeah, thanks for sticking with me.